here's an example though of how Donald Trump is like totally not erratic. He's talking about this grotesque tax bill, which we'll talk a bit more about in a minute, which again would be being rushed through this generation's increase in inequality, limits on what states can do in terms of governance to protect and expand social programs to deal with the problems of the 21st century. This bill attacks all of it and implicates health care as well. This would happen under Jeb, it would happen under Marco, it would happen under Rand, it would happen under any of these despicable, dangerous people. It just happens to be happening with the most demented of them all. And here he is in a very stable and non-erratic fashion talking about the tax bill. Tremendous, because these massive tax cuts will be rocket fuel. Hmm. Little rocket man, rocket fuel for the American economy. He is a sick puppy. <laughs> so yeah, he basically just had a free a, a free sod association because he said rocket fuel, and that made him think of Rocket Man. And Rocket Man is the leader of the small uh, kingdom dictatorship that we've had a dangerous dance with going back to the 1990s where they trade threats of escalations of their weapons program for aid and now we have a leader that's potentially even more unstable than their leader because he regularly threatens to uh, murder in fact functionally murder hundreds of thousands not potentially millions of people on twitter and uh he heard rocket fuel so he thought it was a time to joke about that so yeah it's very very stable good stuff once again orrin hatch who was last seen whining that Democrats call plutocracy policies plutocracy policies. And he's goddamn sick of it because he grew up in middle class, whatever the hell he was whining about. That august, distinguished elder Republican senator said that Donald Trump's a great president. And John McCain, who got a fawning, moronic cover story in New York Magazine, voted for this bill. Lindsey Graham is egging Trump on in the North Korea threats. Symptom of a bigger problem. Trump is herpes manifesting. Uh, on a party line vote, the United States Senate yesterday moved to formal debate on the tax bill. Uh, it would, among other things, uh, increase tax deductions offered to businesses that don't pay corporate taxes called pass-throughs, a company like LLC. And that's meant uh, to win over uh, Steve Daines of Montana, Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. I'm quoting now, uh, continue quoting from Politico, another GOP holdout, represent, uh, Senator Susan Collins of Maine, voted for the bill to move forward after assurances that other legislation would be passed to stabilize the health insurance market if Obama care's individual insurance mandate is abolished in the tracks bill as well and gop senators said they have made progress on a quote-unquote trigger mechanism to raise taxes or cut spending that would kick in if the bill felt short of economic growth projections which of course it will the bill is going to do nothing for economic growth so all that means is that when the trigger kicks in the next assault on the social safety net which marco rubio has already said that they could immediately even before a trigger they should look at cutting people on social security disability um, so that will just be the next round of self-reinforcing austerity which is the bigger redistribution to the top plan and how all these policies fit together anyways there's a bit more from the new york times about what this bill does with potentially far-reaching dimensions elements in both the house and senate bills could constrain the abilities of state and local governments to levy their own taxes pressuring them to limit spending on health care, education, public transportation, and social services. In their battle, in their longstanding battle to shrink government, Republicans have found a, a tax bill vehicle to broaden the fight beyond Washington. All of this is taking shape at such extraordinary velocity, absent the usual analysis, analyses and hearings, that even the most savvy Washington lobbyists cannot be f uh, fully certain of the implications. Economists and tax skeptics are overwhelmingly skeptical that the bills in the House and Senate can generate meaningful job growth and economic expansion. Is my board up? Mm -hmm. 
shocking how handing money out uh, to companies and investors with zero or, or shareholders with zero invested, zero incentive to invest would not grow the economy. By making by tw- 2027, people making four, uh, 40000 and 50000 would combi- pay a combined $5.3 billion in taxes, while the group earning $1 million or more could get a $5.8 billion tax cut, according to the Joint Committee on Taxation in the Congressional Bushel Office. In a recent University of Chicago survey, 38 prominent economists across the ideological spectrum said that only, only said only only one said the only one of 38 said the pros tax cuts would yield substantial economic growth. God knows where that guy works from. Unanimous and who funds him. I think and, I heard that he read misread the question too, but I could be wrong about that. Okay, so he either was uh, go, running on lack of sleep, misread the question, or is like you know an in-house economist for uh, you know I don't know has a subsidized university position from some corporation, or number three, which the I Hoover guess is also possible, yeah, Hoover or something, or number three, he's just really stupid. Um, any of those possibilities. Only one said the uh, uh, unanimously, unanimously, the economists said the tax cuts would add to the long-term federal debt burden, now estimated at more than $20 trillion. Joseph Stiglitz, nor, uh, Nobel laureate, said either it's a religious belief, a belief where no amount of evidence would change it, or they're arguing using the argument cynically and they just want more money for themselves. And I'm going to say uh, probably 20% on the cult and... Uh, 80% cynically just to get more money because of course as soon as this does it's not going to do any economic growth it's going to expand the deficit and then as Sam always says then the next play is oh god spending's out of control well what do we have to do with spending we have to i mean the the big goals and the primary sites that they want eventually they still obviously want to destroy social security medicare but they're going to go after all sorts of other tiny budget items that already are completely underinvested in things like food stamps, subsidies for public education, all these other areas which are slashed down to the bone anyways. And they'll go after those first, and then they'll continue with the broader war on the structural safety net going back to the New Deal because ultimately the policy set and the policy goal is really is a form of neo-feudalism. And look, if you fuse together the limits on voting rights, assaults on people's access to the ballot, net neutrality and greater, greater media concentrations, re-engineered upward tax cut redistributions and the decimation of the last of the social safety net, what does that system look like to you? It's... Thought you, I actually thought you were really like, Matt's like, I got a clever sound trap. Get your taxes down. No, Thank you, you. Exactly. That Donald Trump speaking at the 21 Club. The 21 Club telling a bunch of horrible people that their taxes will go away. Get your taxes down. No, Thank you, you. Yeah, and a graduate student who can't deduct their income anymore, they'll pay for it. Someone making $45,000 a year, just barely surviving. They'll pay more so his daughter doesn't have to pay something on an estate that's gifted to her when he finally expires. Also, shout out to John McCain for voting for this and giving his daughter his tax-free estate before he dies. No, and she could really use it. I mean, the one thing that I will say about Meghan McCain is that she totally deserves everything. You could really tell the merits of of, uh, Meghan McCain every time you see her talk on television. She's extremely intelligent and talented. Uh, shining beacon of meritocracy. Shining beacon of meritocracy. And shout out to Ben Dominich, uh, editor at The Federalists, for locking that down before the tax bill went through, marrying Meghan McCain. Yeah, well, good job, Ben. Also plagiarist. Also plagiarist. And and in order, you know, because if there was any doubt about this obscenity and structural assault on the safety net and democracy being passed, they did need to make sure that uh, Roy Moore uh, wins this Senate race. Hi folks, Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. 
YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.